Hey, and welcome uh, to the hair cards video. Thanks so much for checking it out. Uh, I had a few different people hit me up about the hair. I know that hair cards can be somewhat of a, a touchy topic for some people because it's not an enjoyable process or it's difficult or it's hard to get a creative look that you're looking for. In all the different ways that I've seen and other people doing them, using this tool and this sort of workflow for me hasn't been laborious at all like it's almost an enjoyable uh, experience so hopefully you get something out of this video if you've got any questions hit me up down below i've put this file so i've called this the animark hair cards base file so if you want the this file to have for your library where it's got the layers and everything set up i've got that i'm going to go through everything so you could set this up from scratch if you really wanted to but this is a really good starting point um considering that this base mesh uh, location is like perfect for ZBrush. So like if you were to have a cube here, say like whatever, like 165 centimeters, just put something on this for now. So if I put this up, you'll see, yeah, roughly, uh, it's a pretty good reference. But usually when I'd be building from scratch, like when I start here in, in Maya, I would just have the head in here on a, on a pretty low res so that I can just keep this purely as my hair cards file. So go ahead and download that in the description down below. You can see a file download link if you want to use it and follow along. Or if you want to start completely from scratch, uh, we can go through and create your own file. I'll just go through what this also has in it that I've put. I mean, you can create these separate layers, but what's really good when you're doing hair cards is to have your layers set up. So this would be a good thing to first go ahead and do if you're not downloading the file. Purely for the reason of like, if you were to use a hair card, and I wanted to select the curve, it selects the head as well. So what is really great about doing this is if you have a head layer, you can add the selected objects, is just hit this to a reference. That works as well, but having it as a reference layer there means I can't select it. And then when I'm working with the hair curves, it's perfect. So I also had the goggles that I had for this character and I had them on, a, on this sort of setting. So it was more like a loose ghosted wireframe and the hair block for like the volume of hair that I had in Dynamesh in ZBrush and I could just match it with the curves here um, is a really good trick to get started. Uh, so when you've got your Maya file open, whether you've got my file or another one, the first thing that you wanna wanna do before you get started is downloading the couple of plugins that we're gonna be using. The Hair Strand Designer plugin or Fiber Shop or whatever you're using to generate your textures, you don't need to use the one that I'm using. You could even make them in Photoshop or make it however the hair cards you want. But I'm just gonna go through what I found is really, really useful and what is probably the best cost-effective thing that you could be doing to get a pretty decent outcome. So first of all, you're gonna to wanna to go over, now I have no affiliation with these guys whatsoever. It's just an amazing tool. They have a really amazing customer support in the Discord. It almost seems like it's a better plugin than what you would get natively in Maya. I highly recommend it. I mean, it's on sale right now, but it's usually, you know, 25 bucks US. It's honestly the best. If this is something that you're looking to get into game characters or to be able to do hair card work, then it's for your characters, then this is a no brainer. And then the other one that I use, this was a much more cost effective, you know, it was $14 and it's it generates all all the maps for you as well but this is basically what we're going to be going through in this so go ahead and download this and we'll push on from there jump back into Maya after you've installed it it's obviously super easy to install it's like a lot of other plugins you will have this GS tab here and then this is now GS curves tools this is the one-stop shop like this is the only thing that you need to know when it comes to creating hair cards a couple of other helpful things to turn on when you're getting started in GS curves tools is to go up to options and then what you want to do is go down to your color options so what's really helpful when you have a lot of cards going on over the mesh is the color of the hairs and and the curve being synced in color and then also colorizing the layers to be the same all the same color so what you would want to do is just turn on the sync curve color to layer color and colorize regroup layers and that'll change these colors and all these colors so that it's, you're kind of just working in grouped colors which when everything starts getting pretty messy on the head it makes life a lot easier and we'll get to that as soon as we've created our textures over in hair strand designer so this is inside hair strand designer um, it's, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it's pretty straightforward and it's pretty easy just to go through. If you have any questions on it, hit me up in Discord. But for the most part, you're changing colors, you're changing variation, all this type of stuff. And then when you're done adjusting all the things you want to adjust, you can just hit G. But this is a really good 
uh, solution. So I highly recommend giving these guys a crack. See, and now you have all your maps there that you can export. We'll spit out that texture and we can jump into Maya with the diffuse map and the opacity map, which we're going to use for when we're placing the cards so that we get a better idea of what it's going to look like at the end. So before we jump in and do anything, something that is super important when working with GS Curve Source is to have autosave enabled. And I know this sounds like a cop out thing to throw in a video. Trust me, this is when you break these things, there's no going back. So having auto saves periodically saving throughout your work, it literally saved that whole project that I worked on for this. So I highly recommend it. If you don't know how to do it, it's just in Windows, Settings, Preferences, and then jump down to, I think it's in Files Projects. Yep, auto save, just tick enabled and then obviously change interval you want and then select it. Or if you have a saved project, do it in there. But that literally saved me. So go ahead and uh, throw that on first. So after I exported all the maps, you can see here, what it all spits out, which is the, the important maps that we need when we're gonna be uh, rendering them. But for now, all we're gonna be using is the mask map and the color map for placing them into Maya. So create, go into the hypershade and create. What we wanna do is we just wanna have our Lambert with the mask, I'll flip those around so it's a bit easier to see. We just want our color into the color and our transparency mask into the transparency which is the textures from before and then apply that to here. Okay, so now that we've got our material set up inside of mine with our color and our opacity, let's go ahead and create a card. So let's pretend that none of this is here for now and I'll just do it from scratch. We can go new card and it will just generate a card down here that you can bring up. I wanna have the axis of the card, the gizmo at the bottom of the curve. See so on all these, they're at the bottom so that when I'm placing them, I know to place the, the gizmo onto the mesh and then this is the tip of the mesh. As you can see, this is a bit of a mess. So so it's the wrong way around, but the curve and the gizmo are the right, but the texture isn't. So let's not worry about that just yet. Let's just go and look like, pretend we're creating this from scratch. So if I've got this here, let's just go through and we can do each one. So this first one, the only thing that isn't a tip for this is that when you're doing it, use a, a Lambert shader. Don't use any other weird V-Ray or anything else. Use the classic Maya Lambert shader as that is how you are gonna get your opacity and color in the viewport like this. We've got our first card created and what we wanna do is adjust the texture that's on. So we wanna go down into UV editor window. What we wanna do is we wanna to go to draw. So we wanna draw on our, UV, on our UV there, the exact shape that we want our card to be. I'll just try and get this right. And even after you've drawn it, what we can do is you actually edit it in here using, so you scale, you've got your, your width and your height sort of section. So we can scale it this way or scale it this way, which is how you would get variation when you're stacking them in here. But for the most part, let's just leave that there. And that is our first one. So just before we jump into regrouping our new cards, let's go into the layer section, which is this section here. Um, I'm gonna go through some of the buttons. We're gonna go into regrouping and layer names and colors after this. So we'll just touch on the interface first and then we'll jump into how we can actually set them up with all the colors and stuff. So this button here is the, the toggle for the color switch. So if we just wanted to see the whole head with what the hairs look like with all the color and then back to our layer colors. So I like to keep this on because it is easier visually to see how they are grouped. Um, if you wanted to just see the geometry, you hit that geo and then everything will turn green. And the inverse is obviously just the curve. I like to have all of them on with the color just because it's the easiest visual way placing cards and then turning on and off the layers is alt you can see alt over the top of this here it will have all the hotkeys the one that i use the most is alt click which is just turning on and off the groups of layers and you'll see when the head is full of hair i'll show you how useful that can be so say i had a new card and i wanted to add it to a certain layer it's really as simple as selecting it then going over to the layer right clicking holding add selection to layer and now because in our layer names and colors We'd already set that zero layer to blue. It's going to turn blue. Same way that if we were to select any other card and add it to it, it's now going to be blue. And if we turn those layers on and off, now they're all going to correspond. There's also another way to change which layer it is. So we can go in, down into control curve window. This is basically the main place that you want to be going when you're making any changes to the cards. You can change the layer up here on whereabouts it goes. So if I was to put it into two to go to there, I was to put it into one, it'll go to that purple one in between, but we want to keep it on zero. You can also change the card and the curve color from inside the curve control window. When you have it selected, it's these two colors here. So you can change them 
in there and it will change the curve and the other color. Okay, so let's say that we wanna start organizing our layers and our colors here. So layer names, this is the naming that I've set up here. You can literally go through, write in as many layers as you want and then whatever your curves are in, so say this is in zero, this is in one, you've got all your colors and stuff set up for all of them. Then all you need to do is regroup by layer. So hitting this is now going to look at everything that's in zero, everything that's in one, everything that's in two, and it's gonna spit it out over here. Now what that's done is it's read everything that we've put in here. It's gonna read, read these and all these colors. So what we wanna do if we wanna make all these the same color is what we did before is sync and then regroup by layer and it's gonna color them all for us. So say we wanted to make the next card down on our UV set, we can do that based off this existing large one. What I wanna do is duplicate this, cool. Now it's obviously on the wrong layer. So let's add that to our purple, but it's also in the wrong UV set and it's probably in the wrong section here. See, it's still coming up under there. So what I wanna do is, first of all, is rename this call it medium three. And then we want to regroup by layer. It's now going to go into there, but it's still got the wrong UV. So what we want to do is go into our UV editor window, and then we want to move to the next one across. We can scale it in the, with the height and the width. And then there is our next card. You really only need to rename uh, all the new cards once because now see like this guy is in the folder. Say I'm ready to place him on the head now. I can just hit duplicate. It will automatically stay underneath this thing and have the name of medium. So really we just need to rename it once when it's under them for the first time. And then from there, duplicate, see how they're duplicate, all just coming down under medium there. So it's pretty easy once you have your initial set set up, but then when you do, then we can go start placing our cards now. So there's a couple of different ways to go about doing this. See, first of all, when you rotate, we'll start to wig out. Don't worry about that just right now. What we wanna do is have this guy placed on the scout. I'll just set it as a reference so that I can't select it let's say we let's work on the fringe let's go right to the front here okay cool looks like it's all everything's really difficult and we don't know what we're doing that's great what is really cool about JS Curves Tools is it's all about this curve. You don't really have to worry about the hair because it's got so many great controls in here to start maneuvering it. What you wanna do is right click and control vertex. And now you've got all these different vertices along here. So this is where the customization comes in because this is really cool because right now this is really hard to see. So let's, let's have a work on this and try to make it a lot easier. So what we wanna do is go down to control curve window and in control curve window, this is where all the different parameters that there are, don't get overwhelmed because it's not too hard. If anything, this is just to make our life easier. In the initial, let's set this up properly. So what we wanna go down to is advanced visibility, uh, go curve highlight. All right, so now we're already getting better with that. And then geometry highlight if you wanna have that on, but I usually prefer to have that off because we've already got our texture map lined up in there. You can change the size of all the different parameters. So say if I've got the vertex on here, you can change the size of them, but I think that's good. Something like this is good. Um, we don't really need to be doing anything more than that. So now I can hide the visibility. Now all of the curves that we select are gonna have that. So we control vertex, we'll see it. Go back to here, control vertex, we'll see it. So now that's really cool. If you ever need to do it, have a curve selected, go to curve control window, and then go down to advanced visibility and you can change the visibility of that curve. There's too many curves here, which is, again, not something that we really want. So this is another benefit of having all your templates lined up because you can change them here by doing this. Let's change the CV curves. So what we wanna do now, we had about 10 before, let's make it about three and let's see what it looks like there. See now we've got just the few on the inside. I find that like a lot of times when you're using curves, less is more, which is a really good tip to have with this. So what we can do is actually go through our templates here like we had before and change these to an amount that is good. And then now when we create from these, just keep them at three, they're all gonna have those adjusted points. Let's go back to turn all these off and go back to here, control vertex, because I created this one before, let's just bring it back down again, cool. Control vertex, sweet. Okay, so now if we wanna start placing this card, it's pretty much the same way that you would control any other curve in another program. It's got somewhat of a soft select to it. This is where having those less amount of uh, CV points because it's so much easier to manipulate the hair just by 
you know, a handful of different points instead of heaps of them. So don't be too worried about the orientation of the card itself just yet. We can change all that in a second. So say, I don't know, something like this. We were happy with the positioning. You can already see how easy this is to manipulate. Okay, let's say that we're okay with the card placement there. Awesome, looks great. Except there's a lot of things that we wanna change about the visual side of the card itself. So that is where we go back into our curve control window. And this is, oh, because I'm glad this happened because I didn't have it selected. What you wanna make sure you do is select the curve that you're talking about, then hit curve control window. When you're in here, now this is where you change all of the parameters for a curve, uh, for the actual card itself. So say we wanted to, let's have a look at the, uh, turn this, turn all these off, just so I'm looking at this. And say I did wanna have a look at the geometry for now. So I've turned the geometry back on and we can see where all of our kinks are here. What we wanna do is actually crank that up. Let's call it about 40. And the beauty of this is, when it's all done and you've got all your hair cards on, you can just do a mass select of a layer. So say all your blue hairs are on, we can select all of these and we can actually adjust all of the curves at once, all the resolution, which is a really cool trick to up or down res. Like say that your hair count, you've done all of your hair and you're at 60,000 or something and you're like, far out, I need to make it a 30. It's really just a matter of going through all the layers, selecting them, and then just changing the different dimensions of the of the cards. So what we wanna do here is actually change this to be a direction that hair would be going in. So let's rotate this around like that. That's pretty good for the whole general thing, but say I wanted to change just the bottom of this and twist the bottom and the top at separate things. What we can do is we can actually go into the twist curve graph here. You can see this is just controlling the top and then this is just controlling the bottom and say I wanted the bottom of this card okay let's just let's do like a little cool s thing going on here down a bit yeah cool and say I wanted this to flare out a bit we can actually change that as well per this so let's keep it tight at the top and let's flare it out at the bottom advanced visibility we can turn that off back to the vertex we can pull that back in and as you can see we've got so much control over this using this section here it's really great and then you can just go ahead and reset them uh, the other one that you want to know that you would probably want to be adding as well is so that they're not just such a flat card you can actually add a profile to it so it has somewhat of a little bend just get this geometry back on again this does require width segments so if you've got no width it's not going to work because you need subdivisions in there to make it bend but when you do have it this actually is a really good way of filling volume on a head because it's not a thin plane so you can get away with less cards so sometimes it's better off actually going through with that extra geometry to to get that profile curve going so now i'm going to go ahead and place all the cards on the head for my character and then we'll break down the different grouping and layers that i went through on how i did it all right, so as you can see here, this is the end result for my Layla character that I did, the hairstyle. Um, it came to, to about, uh, I think without the head, yeah, it was about 25K tries um, for the hair, which was okay considering how high the, the character was completely. And it was just for a portfolio piece. So I didn't want to go too crazy, but also wanted to give it a bit of juice. So um, I was pretty happy with that. But as far as the breakdown of how I did it, uh, the eyelashes, I'll, I'll leave those in the file as well. I'll put the texture in there because I did a bit of a Photoshop job to get them on the same texture set. So you can go through and add your hairs onto that texture if you want, if you want to actually keep my eyelash texture and cards so I'll turn those off uh, we can just go through everything I'll turn everything off here and see I'll show you where I went from the start so I actually just try, like to cover the base of the scalp first just so that there's no real like poking through scalp on there and then sort of just build it up yeah so I didn't really use any of those ones got some flyaways going there at the front some thinner ones for when we're catching different silhouettes this was the outer more like wispier hairs see these I'll turn those off. You can see that was more the base hair. And then these ones for the silhouette when you're catching it over the on the edges and stuff, it looked a little bit better. So, but also here's, this is another good example of say, okay, I wanna be working on my wispy hairs. I'll turn everything else off. So I've just got these and then you've got great control here. You can go, yeah, we just want that one cool control vertex and then before you know it you're grooming a hairstyle in a way that you're basically just grabbing clumps of hair and if you want to make big wholesale changes uh, we'll go back to the layer editor here that head back on on reference and like say i wanted to decrease the the divisions on this i can do it on all of them and you can see all of that is now a lot low poly. So it's it's a great tool uh, for ch making big wholesale changes as well as um, turning on and off large groups of hair and keeping it organized for when you're working. 
Well, that's about it. Um, thanks so much for watching and making it to the end if you did. Uh, I hope you get something out of the video and you can use the base file that I've saved out. I'll put the link in the description if you didn't see that and hopefully you can use it on your next projects and it can save you a bit of time in the future. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.